This video is made possible by CodeNotary.io, tamper-proof notarization for all your digital objects. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. Most early computers of the 40s, 50s and 60s had 36-bit addressing and 36-bit registers and that has something to do with the fact that uh, most applications in the early days of computers were math-driven applications where precision is important and uh, because of the binary system and because of electronics, 36-bit was a perfect way to address memory back at the time. In the mid-60s, IBM introduced the S360 architecture and that architecture was designed to be equally good at math and equally good at uh, business applications where strings processing and comparing strings and working with data that is not numbers is equally important. So to this day, there's still some confusion about what all the bit sizes that we hear about for the S360 line of mainframes, what that all means. I've even encountered some IBMers who are still confused of what is 24-bit, what is 32-bit. And the reason, of course, is is easy to see when you see that there is such a diversity of bitness for all the various architectures and even within sometimes it seems the same computer there's different bits and sizes that go into play and so but let's see what what's going on here so in the beginning IBM announced in 1965 the famous S360 architecture S360 obviously stands for being able to cover as I said both math and uh, data applications are business intensive applications where strings and data is not necessarily a number and so to be able to do both equally well IBM actually came out with a 30 bit 32 bit architecture where the word size was 32 bit and the addressable item in memory was a, a byte so IBM kind of invented the 8 bit byte then went into the S360 and is now pervasive in computing today um, so we all know that some of the early mainframes were 24-bit sizes and when, when we speak about 24-bit that means the memory addressing of the application is limited to 24-bit. And of course 24-bit results in 16 megabytes address spaces and that's the limitation that we all know of, of from MVS 3.8, VM370, DOS and some other uh, operating systems of the era of the mid-60s. However, um, that some of the confusion stems from the fact that the register size, even in the very first uh, S36s announced, was 32-bit. So we had register sizes of 32 bits, but the memory addressing, which is a slightly different topic, is 24-bit. So within the program status word that contains the status of the machine at any given time or the processor at any given time, 32-bit was addressable, but only 24-bit were used for memory addressing which at the beginning, of course, was enough, but uh, later on became a constraint. Uh, and of course, floating point registers were available from the very beginning of the S360, and those were actually 64-bit in sizes. And they could be combined in various ways, but uh, let's keep in mind 64-bit. Um, in the 1970s, uh, in the year 1970, IBM announced the S370 architecture, we had a lot of improvements over the S360, mainly, of course, virtual memory support through the dynamic address translation, which is able to um, protect memory address spaces, but also make the full 60 megabyte um, addressable uh, memory, even still 24-bit, but visible to every address space. Uh, instead of having to divide 60 megabytes on in real memory, uh, with the previous architecture, the S360, among many address spaces. So now we had 24-bit memory addressing and 30, still 32-bit register size, and we still had a 64-bit floating point um, environment or architecture. So the, uh, the S370 does not mean we, we increased the bit sizes, it only means we introduced mainly memory uh, management and uh, and virtual memory and some other uh, important improvements uh, in the architecture as well as some new uh, CPU instructions. Then, as we know, behold, in 1983, IBM announced the XA architecture, which stands for Extended Architecture, 
which of course um, alleviated the problem of the 24-bit addressing. So now we had 31-bit uh, addressing and we were able to get all the way up to 2 gigabytes per address space addressable memory. The register size was still 32-bit though and a lot of the confusion stems from the fact that the register here is 32 but the memory addressing is 31. Why is that? We'll get to that in a, in a second. Then, of course, floating point were still 64-bit, which was enough for the applications of the 80s. And now let's understand why 31 bits. I think there's a lot of confusion about that. Why, uh, when you have a computer with a 32-bit word size, why can't you not just get a 32-bit memory addressing and therefore get all the way to four gigabytes of memory addressable? Well, the reason there's two main reasons there's a bunch of other reasons but the two main reasons are is are the following this is the first one in the linkage convention um, on the uh, s360 and s370 architecture and also of course then uh, it was brought forward into the x architecture when a program a calls another program b they need to uh, pass on some parameters and the linkage convention from the very early days of the mainframe was that register one points to the parameter list and the final parameter in the parameter list will have the high bit at 30 at position 32 bit marked on and if let's remember that the s360 architecture to this day is big ending architecture which is not the same that we have today on the uh, intel cpus but the high bit the high order bit uh, the most significant bit was set on and that was a uh, that was a signal to the receiving program that the last parameter has been received and and of course the problem was by using fully 32-bit um, addressing there would be confusion about what the value is of the 30 of the most significant bit and that's why ibm decided to not break compatibility with the earlier applications and therefore use only 31-bit for memory addressing so that all the applications that had been written by that time and let's remember from 1965 to uh, 1983 there had already been 18 years of a very highly successful architecture in the market with many many thousands of applications uh, written uh, dozens of thousands of applications in the in production at that day and so ibm decided not to break compatibility but therefore uh, let go of basically of two gigabytes of additional addressable memory which today proves to be the correct decision because you can still take today a program which was written in 1965 and i've done it many times on this channel in in the videos that you have here and shown that you can take a, a program written in 1965 and run it on the most modern multi-million dollar mainframe produced by ibm today and it will still run fine the second reason why uh, IBM decided to go with 31-bit addressing is that there are two instructions, branch on index high and branch on index low or equal. Those are two instructions which are used for comparison and decision-making in applications. And the way that they were structured already from the first uh, release of the S360, uh, the, the opcode is 86, and it's a, uh, you can see it uses, and then <clears throat> the branch and index low or equal is instruct opcode 87 or 87 i should say um, they have they use the register one register two for the addressing and then a base register and the displacement the important thing with these two instructions that kind of broke compatibility with 32-bit memory addressing or prevented it is that they use um, the arguments are signed numbers and of course, with a signed number on the S360, S370, and XA architecture, the most significant bit is the sign bit, and uh, which can, if it's on, it can signify a negative number. And so, therefore, if we use 32-bit, then by that bit could, loses its meaning for these two instructions. And to not break, and then these instructions would, of course, be called billions of times every minute by all the. Uh, dozens of thousands of mainframe installations worldwide if not hundreds of thousands and so um, these two instructions kind of broke compatibility with a 32-bit memory addressing there is a couple of other uh, reasons um, that have to do with certain machines that have been produced before the x architecture but i will not go into that these are the two main reasons 
the number one reason is the linkage convention of the day and these two instructions which use the arguments as signed numbers so <clears throat> later on IBM released the ES architecture which is extended system architecture 9090 and in that architecture and that is important to understand did not change the XA memory addressing architecture at all it uses still 31 bit for memory addressing it uses 32 bit register size still and still 64 bit floating point however uh, certain machines were produced from the 1990s on which were able to address more than two gigabytes of real memory how is that possible like, just like uh, like today when we have 64-bit processing on today's Intel computers it doesn't mean the processor can actually address full 64-bit of RAM it is it, the architecture is able to address it but most modern CPUs that we buy today for laptops etc they go maybe up to 45 46 bits memory addressing and the same thing with the uh, mainframes there was 31 bit memory addressing 32 bit register sizes but the CPU itself would go up to 35 bit and therefore be able to address 32 gigabytes for certain mainframes like the IBM 9672 which was released I think in the very late 90s uh, that machine was able to address up to 32 gigabytes of memory however the individual address space could still only see two gigabytes and one of the innovations of ESA was that there could be some address spaces which would for which were going to be for data only and some other address spaces which were mixed data and instructions so this way they could alleviate the pressure of of the two gigabytes 31 bit address space for all applications and then finally in the year 2000 IBM released the Z architecture which of course now for the first time made it possible to have register size and memory addressing of the same size 64 bit so you can see 64 bit for memory addressing and register size also 64 bit and the early mainframes had 64 bit floating point uh, registers and later machines went all the way up to 128 bit uh, floating point uh, registers of the very late machines of today so this is what we have in terms of bitness now it's important also to understand which operating systems had support for which bits and here the picture is a little bit more complicated but I'll go through it quickly 24 bits which is the earliest mainframes released in the in this uh, IBM mainframe class as we all know uh, there was the very famous OS 360 which is the grand 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 grandfather of ZOS of today that of course only supported 24 bit because the S360 released in the 1965 by definition was only 24 bit as we saw before DOS 360 was 24 bit and VM 370 of course was also 24 bit then uh, later versions of OS 360 like um, grandchildren or, or descendants of OS 360 such as MFT and MVT those had some uh, those are variations of, uh, of uh, virtual memory or memory partitioning uh, technologies they were still 24 bits and DOS VS which had some uh, virtual um, memory support with the S36 S370 also was 24 bit and even the VMSP which was used on uh, machines uh, in the into the 90s was also still 24 bit and of course the famous MVS 3.8 which we have um, in the in the enthusiast community today with TK4 uh, by Jürgen Winkelmann uh, was 24-bit and even the product released by IBM in the 80s MVS SP which contained a lot of advancements such as Rex in, in MVS such as RecF and uh, very capable VTAM and other subcomponents that was all still 24-bit and in fact if you had any complaints from customers in the eight, late uh, 70s and early 80s it was a 24-bit 16 memory uh, uh, address space was just too small for them especially for Kix applications and other online applications VSSP was also 24-bit and VMSP as we saw before was also 24-bit um, then 31-bit mainframes appeared and the first machines the first operating system to support it was MVS XA announced in 1983 and MVS ESA was also still 31-bit and VMXA was also 31-bit then later on 
in the late 90s OS 390 was announced by IBM which was also still a 31-bit operating system so was VSESA and VMESA which is a beautiful very uh, capable and still lightweight operating system that I love to use is also V 31-bit the first ZOS announced was also that a lot of people think that ZOS means 64-bit. No, the first um, ZOS announced was still 31-bit. I think only ZOS 1.4 or 1.6 became 64-bit. Um, and Z Linux, the very first Linux available on the mainframe architecture, was also 31-bit. And that, of course, means 31-bit at memory addressing, but 32-bit register size. And finally, we have the 64-bit mainframes announced in the year 2000. Uh, ZOS 1.6 was only 64-bit. There was uh, the 31-bit support was gone. ZVSE uh, is 64-bit, and of course, ZVM from 5.3 up is only 64-bit. And uh, well, there's the guest operating systems could be 31-bit, but the uh, nucleus was 64-bit for ZVM. And then, of course, Z Linux with the S390X architecture is 64-bit um, only. And so that gives you an overview from the earliest mainframes from the 1965 to the latest Z15 of 2019, how they dealt with memory addressing, the register sizing, the floating point, and the various operating systems that supported those machines. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please post questions below this video and goodbye.